Hi everyone, welcome to A Beer With Bread episode 32. Tonight I'm going to talk about some black and white photography as well as digging through my archives. But first, let's talk about the beer. Tonight I'm having a Lucky Bucket pre-prohibition style lager. Uh, Lucky Bucket's right down in La Vista, kind of by all the other breweries. There's a big concentration of breweries down here. you got Lucky Bucket, Cross Drain, Pint 9, Nebraska Brewing, Infusion Brewing. Uh, as well as there's a distillery down there, and then Lucky Bucket also has a distillery. So, uh, Lucky Bucket kind of has a little bit of an interesting history. Uh, they're one of the early uh, breweries in this kind of whatever you want to call it, modern era of breweries. You, know, you had Jaipur that opened in '92, and Upstream that opened in '96. Then you had a couple breweries, Jobbers Canyon and Exarbon, that opened in the early 2000s that didn't make it. And then you had Nebraska Brewing Company that opened in 2007, and then Lucky Bucket in 2008. So the interesting thing about Lucky Bucket is, is the, the brewer that started this, Zach, he left the upstream where he was a brewer for a long time, opened Lucky Bucket, and then he left Lucky Bucket and opened Brickway downtown in the old market, and that was about 2013. And then just this past summer, uh, he bought back Lucky Bucket, and so he's keeping Brickway, and then he's improving uh, Lucky Bucket. So... Over the years, there was a kind of a general consensus around town that Lucky Bucket had really gone downhill. Uh, I didn't drink too much of it in the last few years. Uh, the main reason I didn't drink a lot of it is because they were still bottling, and uh, I'd rather have a beer in a can when I'm at home uh, just for recycling purposes. The cans are so much easier to deal with, take up less room, and they're so much easier to recycle. So I had not been drinking... Uh, Lucky Bucket, but one of one of the my favorite beers that they had was called Certified Evil. And the last couple times I got a Certified Evil, they just something wasn't right with it anymore. So I kind of uh, f fell away from it, and then it was kind of surprised to hear that uh, Zach bought it back uh, this year. And he, uh, one of the things that he mentioned in one of the interviews I read is that he wanted to uh, bring back or fix some of the old recipes, some of the, his original recipes from back in 2008 and get them back to where they were and then he also as you can see here switched from bottles to cans so this is the first uh, new can of lucky bucket i've had since they've come back out uh, you can find them pretty much well before they switched uh, they stopped production for a while switched to cans fix the recipes since they brought them back you before you could get it at any grocery store i'm assuming this will be available at any grocery store i picked this up at my neighborhood grocery store right down the street this evening so uh, it's good to see them back and uh, good to taste their beer again. Again, that's the Lucky Bucket Pre-Prohibition Style Lager. Uh, can't wait. I haven't seen the Certified Evil in a can yet, but uh, it's kind of cool since they switched from bottles to cans. You also know that everything you're getting right now, if you see a can of Lucky Bucket beer, they're all fresh. So tonight I want to talk about black and white photography. I think I've kind of hit on it in a few other videos and uh, I don't know that I've ever devoted a full video to it, but uh, I, I've always really enjoyed photography, uh, black and white photography that is. You know, I got my, my uh, start in black and white photography back in high school in 2005. Um, these are two strips of black and white film I shot, 35 millimeter film. I shot these in 2000 or not even 2000, 1995. So 1995, the uh, beginning of my senior year of high school, um, like I mentioned before, I had taken all the art and architecture and drafting classes and I needed another uh, class to you know kind of round out the my my time at, at high school. So I said, well, I'll try photography. And you know, here I am all these years later, almost 30 years later, just loving it still. So. Uh, you know, first, all of high school and then the first three years of college was all on uh, black and white film. And so I've always just really enjoyed the process of black and white. And and I, I honestly, I don't do it enough uh, these days. But, uh, you know, it was, back then it was always fun. You get out the loop and you know, you're on the light table and you're looking at your negatives and trying to see what you have. It's a, it was such a different time back then instead of these... 24 inch monitors looking at your 35 millimeter negatives through the loop. It's quite different, but uh, I, I always say that I enjoyed the dark room more than sitting at the computer because the dark room was hands on. You were standing up, you were moving around, you were listening to your music, where now you're staring at a computer screen like you do with everything else in life. So, 
So recently I had someone, I quite often I get uh, people ask about a, a picture, a certain picture in black and white, and it happened again a couple of months ago or a couple of weeks ago now. And um, someone wanted to see some of my black and white Nebraska Sandhills photos. Or, or if, if I could make some of my Sandhills photos in black and white, I said, sure. So I basically went back to the trip I took in 2016. This would have been uh, September 2016. I did a, a three-day quick trip out to the Nebraska Sandhills. Uh, basically left one day, I think at lunchtime, left Omaha midday, drove out, and then spent two nights, and then came back on, the, I think, uh, on the third morning. So. Uh, so I went back to that trip from 2016, and I just started started at the beginning and going through the photos. And the f So this first photo here, I uh, wasn't even out to the sand hills yet. It was a rural scene that I just kind of came across when I was driving out there. Uh, it was a nice field full of round hay bales, and the hay bales had a nice side light on them. And the neat thing about the round bales is, you know, if you get the right lighting conditions, the you know, shadow kind of gets darker as it rolls down the side of the bale. So it was just a cool scene. I never processed this one in black and white, and um, once I did, it really made it a different photo because it was kind of boring afternoon um, colors, you know, the 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 contrast of the colors were just, the sky had like a baby blue look to it and then all the yellow from the field. But once I converted to black and white and then added in some contrast, it really made it a different photo. There are things I would like to change. There are things if I could go back, I would kind of reposition my camera just a little bit. And then I also wish the clouds were a, a little bit different, but overall, really cool photo. Second photo uh, was another still driving out to the sand hills. Now I'm kind of getting into more of a, a rolling sand hill area. Uh, this is a windmill. If you've never been to the Nebraska sand hills, there's windmills all over out there. So just a, a, a windmill scene, still okay clouds there, just like the one before. It's you know not too far away from the last one. The clouds aren't the best, but uh, it made it work. So then I'm going to go, I'm going to skip around here a little bit. Um, this was another one that is on my website in color. Uh, this is just another nicer, cleaner windmill scene. This is now I'm on the second day. So the first two were from day one. Uh, didn't get too much that night. And then um, uh, this is on to the second day. This one I really liked. Um, just kind of the contrast between the clouds and the, the rolling sand hills. I like, like I said, this one is a nice clean sand hills. There's no cedar trees or any cattle gates or anything to, to kind of mess up or muddy up the scene. So nice contrast in the clouds. Maybe the sky could, I could burn the sky a little bit darker to make that uh, puffy white cloud jump out. But uh, overall, I, I just like kind of how this one all lined up and came together. Again, this is a middle of the afternoon uh, shot. So the, you know, the colors, in, when it was a color photo, just weren't as very interesting, so. Uh, this one had a, actually had a rainbow in it originally. In the color photo, you can kind of see right coming out, there's a rain shaft there, and coming out of the rain shaft, you can see a rainbow. Converted it to black and white. I know where it is, so I know where to look or point people, but uh, again, just a, a couple round hay bales. Had a, they have a nice uh, side light on them. The round part or the ends are kind of darker. And then you got the nice contrast from the white clouds, the rain shaft coming down, and the dark bottoms to them. Cool, like afternoon sand hills type thunderstorm. So this next photo I'm going to show you is my, now, now in 2023 is my absolute favorite photo from that trip. It, I never processed it. I was going through my photos from 2016, you know, eight, seven, eight years ago, and, and came across this photo. And I granted, in color, it wasn't much. And I shoot all these in color, and then when I want to make them black and white, um, I process them black and white. And th this thing just, I don't know, it jumped out at me. The, first of all, you got the cool fence line kind of leading you into the windmill. And then you got the cool hill on the right that comes down in the scene, also kind of leading you into the windmill. And then the windmill kind of pops you up into the sky to this super cool cloud. You know, the top of the cloud is really billowing up, and then there's just tons of contrast up there between some of the dark uh, bottom parts of the cloud and then the white. Uh, 
Again, the sky could maybe be a pinch darker, do a little more burning up there, but I kind of like it the way it is. I also didn't want to darken the image anymore because I wanted that windmill to really stand out from the cloud. You know, the bottom of those clouds, I could burn those a little bit more, but I wanted that separation between the cloud and the windmill. So uh, just a really cool scene. And then you got a really nice shadow back there on that far hill. Uh, the kind of just another nice contrast between that and then that curve that comes down you know from the from the right side there into the windmill and then more nice lighting and back on the left side just really all the pieces there this is like I said my favorite photo from that trip and it's funny that I never never saw it until the September of 2023 so definitely gonna have a print of this one pretty soon um, or maybe by next summer at the art fairs but uh, really cool so then this photo is from later that night uh, it's the one I really liked before I have printed this I've had it on my website a long time in color uh, never convert to black and white it's kind of funny because the colors always uh, looked a little strange to me and I don't know why just maybe it was the weird lighting with the grass that was kind of green but starting to yellow a little bit and then it just the time of day but this there's things that would change. I would like to go back. I wish I could go back and redo this one. I know where this is, so I could, but I'd like to get a little bit lower and get that windmill popped up a little bit higher in the air, uh, get a little more separation from that sand hill, and then uh, maybe just do a little bit, um, a little bit of a different angle on it. But overall, I really like this photo, uh, and it's kind of cool to see it in black and white. So now we're going to move on to day three the final day of the trip and this is another picture that i've had on my website a long time it's a uh, uh, nice sunrise this these clouds and the color version were really pink and then when i uh, processed it in black and white uh, just had a real nice contrast up there it's kind of the v kind of lead you into the middle of the photo i like how the dark windmill stands out uh, just in front of those clouds and then a little bit of reflection. I don't have the whole windmill reflected, but just a little hint to know that that thing is uh, full of water. The water's crystal clear. I really like that. I don't know, you know, if I went back and did this one again, if I would change much. Um, you know, some of that grass on the left is a little, you know, the, the whole left inch or so of that photo, or maybe inches isn't the right word to be on this size, but, you know, the, the right or the left... Uh, fifth of that photo is a little bit boring and distracting but you know maybe crop it a little different or if i went back you know could have moved the camera over a little bit that's the easiest i always look at these photos after and it's like why did i not walk two feet to the right but overall really cool there's a little bit of wind movement that uh i had my shutter speed cranked up because that window was flying but you can see just a little hint of movement there. I don't know if that's cool or if I would want it tack sharp. I kind of like that it's moving because then you know it still works. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of those windmills out there in the Sand Hills still do work, whereas in the rest of the state you don't uh, where where they can run an electric pump, they don't use the old windmills nearly as much. So so that was from the 2016 trip. Uh, like I said, cool. <laughs> One of the coolest pictures I took that year was from that trip. Didn't even process it. And then I'm going to jump forward to uh, 2021, which was at the Sand Hills. I went to Sand Hills and the Badlands. Um, there was a whole video series on my YouTube channel for those. Uh, some of these you might see, but I don't think most of them. I didn't do a lot of filming on the way up there. And all it's funny because all four of these photos I'm going to show you um, are on the way up there. So First one. Just a nice gravel road I found. Just kind of leads you back into the scene. Uh, a couple nice trees, the, just the dark trees set against the, the cool puffy clouds. I really like those. Uh, I wish there was a little bit more spotlighting on the hills in the background, but uh, still, still a neat photo. Then we go a little farther up the road and as the storm. So the, the deal with that day was as I left North Platte heading north, it just, um, more and more storm type clouds started billowing up and uh, started getting into some rain showers. So here's one, uh, just kind of a typical sand hill scene and uh, just kind of liked how the clouds have that rain just falling out of them. Kind of an interesting mood in black and white. Uh, the grass has a nice, the, the yellow tufts of grass uh, have a nice contrast against the darker color hills. So 
Another fun one. And then here's where I'm really getting into the storm. Uh, this is a gravel road that kind of just swoops down and curves into the scene, which I really like. And then you got all the different textures, the clouds up in the top. I really like that it has the mamantis there and then kind of these darker clouds wrapping around the mamantis and then all the rain coming down on the left side. Um, that, like I said, the gravel road just kind of from the middle of the screen goes a little bit to the right and then curves right back in the middle. Really like the way that one looks. Just a, a neat sand hill storm. Uh, nothing severe. I don't even think there was much lightning out there that day. But uh, I like cool clouds. And then after I made it through all the storms and came out the back side of the storm, came across this scene, which you've probably seen this. Uh, I've had a, a big, big metal color print of this so at uh, many of the art fairs recently. Uh, they've been really popular with uh, different things. I uh, actually even had uh, this picture in color was given out at a... I'm going to draw on a blank. I think it was a UN, yeah, UNO event. Uh, they got 25 metal prints they were giving out to all the attendees from different school districts. Uh, so just as a sample to show the people that were interested in the Sand Hills black and white, I converted this one to black and white. Then uh, this one also had a rainbow. Remember the earlier one I said had a rainbow, but you couldn't see it once it converted black and white. This one you can still see the both rainbows, the main rainbow and then the secondary double rainbow. And uh, another one I think really really looks good in black and white. So, uh, gonna have to uh, figure out what to do with all these. Uh, kind of debating, uh, just making like a black and white landscapes page uh, on my website. Right now I have a Nebraska page. You know these could all fit under the Nebraska page. So I didn't know if it would be too cluttered to have you know both the black and white and the color or do a separate, I don't know that I have enough black and white images right now, why well, I guess I should go back and look at my other stuff, but, uh, so I still gotta figure out what to do about the website. You know, a couple of these I like, but I don't know if they're quite good enough to put on the website. So, a lot of, a lot of things to think about there. Well, thanks again for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying your Lucky Bucket pre-prohibition lager. Get ready. Uh, pretty soon I'll be on my fall color photography trip. This year will be uh, Wyoming. It's going up through Colorado into the uh, couple days in Colorado and then up into the Tetons and then kind of see what the weather and conditions are like after a few days to decide where we go after that. So going with my buddy Josh and his wife Amy again. Uh, looking forward to it. It's always a great to get out and uh, do the fall color photography trips. I really in, enjoy getting out and uh, hopefully we have some great conditions, uh, great light, great snow, great uh, trees, so maybe some awesome wildlife. Again, last time I went to the Tetons, I uh, saw a ton of moose and a couple bears. Didn't really get any photos of bears because they were always usually the back end of them running away from me, but the moose got some cool moose. You know, I actually, it's funny. Uh, I don't have it here on the screen, but I'll edit it in the video here. I was looking through some pictures from the last time I went to the Tetons, and I came across this pretty cool moose photo over here with, you got the cow and the calf looking up at the bull coming through the grass. So uh, I should go back to the last Tetons photos and uh, see what, see if there's a few more of those gems in there. I haven't spent a lot of time looking through those yet. And the other funny thing is, is I've been to the Tetons now. This will be my third trip. Uh, the first two, first one was like four or five days. Last one was a full week. This one's a full week. I don't even have a Wyoming page on my website. So all the Tetons photos I've ever taken are just living on a hard drive waiting to uh, see the light of day. So hopefully get back from this trip and uh, get all of them put together and have a Wyoming page pretty soon. So, Well, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. And we'll see you again next month.